Last time we installed the EM data for free, but now you've got some logs from the track and you want to build a simple layout around it. Let's do that right now. So now that you've got your track log files, let's go ahead and open up AEM data here. When you open it up, you'll see this quick start menu pop up. If you don't see this pop up, you can go ahead and click quick mode up here and then make sure enable quick mode is disabled. Once that's disabled, this should pop up. Quick start is a great way to open up your recent projects and then also just open up a log file in a new project. We'll go ahead and exit out of this and then we'll go up to file and the new project. And since we're starting from scratch, let's go to the empty project. Now, since we have log files that we want to bring up, we'll go up here to open our log file. And you'll see up top the path that AEM data takes to look for your logs. This is where I keep my logs and this is where I would suggest you keep yours too but this is totally customizable. You can change this whenever you want. We'll go ahead and open up this log right now. Now you can see all of the data on our channel list on the right side that we've logged. And then you can see our trace here where we can drag all of our data into these three lanes. For example, let's go ahead and throw on engine speed and then throttle percentage. Having whichever channels you want on the same trace is a great way to compare them. Now you can see throttles in the yellow and engine speed is in the white. Now for some basics, you can zoom in with the scroll wheel or the plus and minus key. I personally prefer the scroll wheel. I think it's a little bit easier, but it's totally up to you. If you want to isolate any data, say you just want to look at 35 seconds to 45 seconds here, you can double click and hold on the second click and then drag to whichever section you just want to isolate. Once you let go, you can press S and then it'll zoom in on that one section that you just wanted to look at. You can then hold the right mouse button to drag across the data and look wherever you want or you can go old school and use the scroll bar down below. Now this is really simple data, so let's go ahead and customize it a bit. Once you start to have a ton of channels on one singular trace, it can get a bit confusing. So if you go over here and say I click on throttle, you can see that line flash. It's a great way to tell exactly which channel you're working with. Once you've clicked on that, you can go to channel properties and there is a ton of customizing options. For example, if we wanna change the color of the line, we can go ahead and enable it right here. You can see it automatically turned to orangish red here, but if you want to change it, you can click right here and say, go to everyone's favorite color, wheat. If you want to get specific with your data, you can change the view ranges. Right now it's on auto, which just automatically sets your ranges from the lowest value that was taken and the highest value that was taken in the channel. We'll go ahead and uncheck that. And then we'll say, for example, instead of 98, we'll go up to 120. Now watch this line drop once I click OK. Now you can see on our left that our maximum value is 120 instead of 98. But since our channel only logged 98 as its highest level of data, it no longer reaches the top of our trace. I'm sorry, I, I, gotta, I gotta switch this off. Wheat, it looks way too close to the other color. I know there's gonna be a lot of people mad at me in the comments, a lot of wheat fans, but we'll just change it to lime. We'll also just revert these back to auto just to keep it simple. If you wanna get really specific with your data, you can change how many decimal places you'll see. Once I click this off auto, look at that 65 up on the top right. As I add more decimal places, the data gets more specific. For something as high as engine speed, you really don't even need decimal places. But for something with a lower value, like let's say battery voltage here on the right, maybe you do want some decimal places in there. How many is up to you. I'm gonna stick with auto again. You can also change your alarm limits down here. For example, let's go over and add engine load KPA in our middle trace. Now, if we go to our channel properties again and enable our alarm limits, let's say we don't want our engine load to go over 360. Now you can see these little lines here. Every portion that is marked red here is a moment where our value either hit 360 or went above it. This can be super useful when you're dealing with delicate channels that can't go above a certain limit or even below a certain limit. You can also change the units below, which there are tons of options of way too many to go over right now. But if there's a unit you want to use, it's probably in here. Now, if you want to edit anything in the trace, you can click on any channel and go to trace properties. We'll do this on throttle right now. You can change a ton of things here, like enabling the grid, alarms, changing the height or range. You can also switch between each lane to edit right here, or you can switch each channel that you want to work with with this button. If you wanted to make a new tab to work on multiple projects at once, or if you just want more room for a single project, you can really quickly right click up here, go to new tab, name that tab. And then once you're on this blank screen, you can right click again to add view 
And then let's say, for example, if we just want to remake that first tab, we can remake it super easily by just clicking the channel list, expanding that out here, and then right clicking and adding another trace. And then now you can see it already starting to look like it, but we've only got one trace up here. So if we right click on this, we can insert another lane, right click on it again, insert another lane, and then there we go. It looks almost identical to our first tab, except just without data. Now, if you wanna save this super simple project, we can go up to file up here, and then you'll have two options, save project or save template. If you save the project, it saves all the work that you've done so far, like the colors and the channels that we've added, etc. And you can open it back up exactly how you left it. If you wanna save something a bit simpler, saving the template only saves the physical layout of everything, but not the data itself. So if you like the look of the windows that you've made and wanna use it again in the future, you can just save the template. We're gonna go ahead and save the project since we wanna keep this data. And you can see up top the automatic location that AEM data saves all your projects at. Again, you can always change this. We'll just give it a test name and then we'll click save. And now you are free to exit out. So if we exit out right now and then try and load back in, you'll see our data comes straight back up along with our quick start menu. Now there is a ton more that we can do, and this is just a bare bones explanation to how to make a basic channel list and trace so you can take a look at your data that you've logged. But the more that you use AEM data, the more you'll learn. And since everything is customizable, there is a lot to learn. And that's everything. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to leave them down below. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe and like this video too if we helped you out. Again, I'm Bren from AEM, and I'll see you next time.